Welcome to today's Watch and Learn. I'm Johnny Barfus, Handy Quilter Studio Educator. With me, I'm Kim Sandberg, Studio Educator too. That's right. Today we're going to be talking about Pro Stitcher Designer. We're going to be talking about editing existing designs mm -hmm. and creating new ones. So Kim's going to start first with editing existing designs. Right. And I'm going to show you a few uh, ways to make create new designs. So right. let's go. From a project that you had. Yeah. So designer, absolutely love it. Have yes. a lot of fun playing with it. Had a recent project. It's actually hanging here behind us. Um, made a feathered star quilt. Classic. Always been on my bucket list of things to do. By the time I got done with it, I swore I would never piece another half square triangle. However, and yet yesterday, I'm my, sure she My was... project I'm currently working on, of course, has half square triangles in it. However, oh, I, I love the way it turned out. I do too. I love this quilt. I yeah. know we're supposed to be talking about something else, but this is bonkers to me, you guys. When <laughs> she said feathered star, I didn't really have in my mind what it was. So look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it was so, a fun quilt to make. It was a fun quilt to yeah, make. I love it. So tell us about the quilting, how yeah. you did use designer. So there's a little bit of history on the quilting on this, uh, this quilt. First of all, um, Kelly and Christina and I taught a class for a uh, Houston festival mm -hmm. last year in December, and we used this as one of our, how do you quilt that? So I got some great ideas from Christina and Kelly, and I kind of took those and put them together. And then quiltable.com came out with this awesome new collection called the Ombersley Feathers. Ombersley Feather Collection. And I found some designs in there that I thought would be perfect. Uh -huh. So, because I had so much awesome quilting space in here, you guys can see all this white background. Yeah. I was really excited to be able to do something fun with it. So I picked a couple of designs and I'll show you here on the screen. I actually brought in a picture in the background and then I auditioned some designs. I brought in designs and started playing with them, kind of found my layout. But the trick was they didn't exactly fit in the spaces I needed. So I needed to do some editing. So specifically, if you guys look right here, this design right here, I took two designs and cut them apart and then pulled some pieces back together again and nice. turned it into a separate design. So that was really great. And then this design here, I ended up actually extending all of these little points along here so that they would quilt clear out here into the feather into that feather, that space of the, the, those lovely half square triangles that I got to piece. Can you zoom in a little bit on that your, on your computer so yes. we can see that a little more clearly? So let me show you. I think we you. might have some questions about that. Yeah. Okay. So I made these, these longer, but let me show you kind of the process that I did specifically to create this design right here. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So let's come over here to, I believe it's this one. Yeah. Okay, so I use these two designs here, and it was really it was really easy. I've got this uh, down here in the right hand corner of the screen. You can see that I've got open the designs from the Ombersley Feather Collection, Ombersley Feathers, and there was this design, which is a feather border, and then this one, which was a lined melon. And I wanted to combine the two because I wanted to have these piano keys that go mm -hmm. up and down on the top, and the part here that went on the inside. So, let's do some editing, shall All we, Johnny? Right. Yeah, show us how you did that. Okay. So, first I need to select my design with the shape tool, and then I need to go in and make some cuts. So, I'm going to have to split my line to split apart the one part of the design from the other. Now, this part of the design here, I actually want to get rid of now. So, I'm just going to touch my select button and then hit delete. And Let's try that one more time. I actually have to ungroup those designs. <laughs> Got to remember to do things in the right order. Then I can come over here to my sequence view and let's select just the one part that I want to get rid of. It's the bigger part. Well, that feather, right? Yep, okay. that feather up there at the top. So let's delete that. Okay. Okay, awesome. Now I have just the part that I want to keep, right? Mm -hmm. um, I need to flip it. So we'll go up to the modify tools and I'll use my flip tool and I'll flip it over. And then I'm just going to bring that right up here. And it's really great because these were, these were done with basically the same curve, so it fits pretty closely. Yeah. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit here so you guys can kind of see what I'm going to do. I'm going to do just a little bit of editing here. Um, you can see that it's not fitting 100% exactly, right. right? So 
So I'm just going to grab these points and pull them up a little bit higher. Just so you guys can kind of get the idea of what I what I did uh -huh. to, to go through and do this. So I did I did a few modifications like this, went through, did all the good stuff, modified all those little lines, and then I was able to um, select all of my items and then do uh, a connect. So if I do a right click and do utility and then choose connect here. And I can also use the control T and I can connect those two. And then it connects those designs so that they are now one continuous design. And if we go back over here to my window, my design window, I can actually open this up and you can see that this is the design that I ended up with that I used. And it was perfect for that shape. As a matter of fact, if we take a closer look at the quilt, let me show you how well this quilted out. So this is the design right here that I was talking about. And you guys will have to forgive me. I don't have my binding finished yet. Still, hey, still, the binding's so long. Give her a break, you guys. I know. I just haven't done the whip stitching on the back. But you can see that I have those piano keys right up here at the top that stitch up. You can see those right along here. Okay, right. And then I also have the lines that stitch down into that feather. And then when I brought this and I set it up, I just made a very exact area in Pro Stitcher. And I was able to crop the edge of those designs and then have that stitch out perfectly. Uh, Isn't that great, Johnny? Yeah, that is truly amazing. It's, pr it's pretty cool. And it was, it was so awesome because it was easy to do that to take these two designs and combine them together. Mm -hmm. So that's one way that you can edit existing designs. I, you know, do you ever feel like sometimes you're like, oh man, I bought this design, so I gotta use it the way it is, but guess what? <laughs> you don't. You don't. You can change it a little bit. You can yeah. change it, you can change it. And make it fit your design. Let's talk about, uh, uh, I think we get a lot of people, a lot of feedback from people like, can I do this with this design? Mm -hmm. Is it breaking the copyright? No. Let's talk about not. the copyright in that instance. Yeah. Now, it, breaking the copyright would be something like uh, taking this design and trying to resell it as your own. Right. So Kim's not going to repurpose nope. this design under Kim's creations. No. And, and I'm not <laughs> selling this quilt. She's it's not mine. selling this quilt. It's from quilt. So if you have a design that you've purchased and you want to edit it in our software, that is within your oh, yeah. legal rights to do that. Absolutely. But we don't want, you're not allowed to sell it as your own yeah. or something like that. Make, make a few edits to it and then call it my own or resell. I would not, I would never resell this. I would right. never try to sell this design. Yeah. No. This is, but I was able to take two pieces of two different designs and bring them together and make them fit perfectly. Yeah. Um, there was one other design that I did some really fun modifications on, and I was trying to see if I have the, the saved. Actually, I don't think I do. But let me show you. So this one here, so this design, uh -huh. um, <laughs> I did some really fun modifications on this one. I was trying to find a USB that I used to quilt this with this morning. And of course, um, I brought in like 17 USBs and the one is still at home. Sometimes so, we have a lot of USBs sometimes around. Sometimes we have a lot of USBs. Do any of you have that issue? <laughs> but on this design right here, so let me show you. On this design right here, this, this is where I put that, that design in here. And I wanted to make sure that my lines would come all the way out for these feathers. Mm -hmm. Well, the way that the, line, the design is created, it would only come to right here. Uh -huh. If I tried to make it bigger, I would lose these points, which I wanted to keep these points because part of what I was trying to do was create a circle within the quilting and then kind of have another loop within the quilting. Yeah, so, so can we get can some, make sure we get a good shot yeah, of that? The, kind of, kind that of creating a, a secondary design. And then my other oval is right, it goes right up here and comes over here. So it kind of makes an oval around there. And it's a little hard to see. This, this yellow one's actually a really good example um, because it's not as busy as some of the other prints. But you can see that line that just continues right there, trying to create that secondary circle. Yeah. But I wanted to have these lines come out all the way. So let me show you kind of what I did with this design. I love that how you did that oval. I, I wanted to do that with a quilt fun. like last yeah. year. but. I didn't have the know-how to do that. Yeah. Much, so. Well, and that was when actually when um, 
Kelly and Christina and I did the class together. Kelly had drawn that out, like doing a secondary design with some kind of a circle. And I was like, oh, I totally want to put that in there because this quilt has so many straight lines. Having the secondary design with uh, something curved, I thought was really, yeah. creates interest, right? Really neat. So I had some a lot of fun editing this design. What I did was I actually took these design points here and I like stretched them way out. You guys, it was kind of bonkers. And there's, there's some over stitching that goes on here. So we've got some extra points. But I essentially did this kind of a thing all the way around where I had this super funky um, like wings uh -huh. on this, which looks really weird on the design, but it allowed me to go through and set up a perfect area. Here, I'll pull one more up here so you can kind of see there. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I had these little extra wings in here and I was able to set up an area and then crop and it went all up into those feathers just yeah. perfectly. So beautiful. Yeah, so don't, you know, I think this is one of the best features of designer is uh -huh. that I could take this design and with just a little bit of editing, I was able to make it fit perfectly. So I went it because originally I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go back and like channel my inner Kelly and Christina and <laughs> use a ruler. And then I was like, why? <laughs> I'm so not going to do that. <laughs> really quick, um, Kayla, can you, I don't know where this camera, oh, is on the yellow? Sorry. I just wanted to point out how Kim used crop on yeah. these points here. So a lot of times we'll have a question like, well, how could I skew something into that mm -hmm. area? No, but you could use, she used crop mm -hmm. in Pro Stitcher to get into these points. And look how custom that is with Pro Stitcher. That's such an amazing use of the crop feature right there. Yeah. I just wanted to really point that out. And it, it, it really made it perfect. It, it just made it turn out perfect. I actually, let me, um, I'll add a point right here and then you just make a little change there. When you add points, sometimes you have to change the type of point it is so you get those nice straight lines. This, this little top here on the screen, you guys see this, this lovely little wing here? That's essentially what I had and that allowed me to um, do that crop yeah. and get all up inside those areas and it, it was perfect. It was I perfect. Love it. So, so great. So yeah, so I went from doing something like this where I can actually, let's zoom back out a little so you guys can kind of see. I played around with this a little bit and got it so that I kind of laid out basically where I wanted designs to be and then I was able to go in and make everything fit. Mm -hmm. And I think you can see my, that oval. Yeah, on yeah, the, yeah. On the, screen, on, the, on the screen, on the screen I was able to play with this and figure out how to do this. And then I actually went back and inside the stars here, I used the star points, the rest of the star points. I used Mark in Pro Stitcher mm -hmm. first to do that. And then I edited that design in here. And once again, that's on the, that lovely missing USB that I can't find. But I was so able to- So you used Mark to record? To, yeah, I, okay. I created a design with Mark. If you guys look here on the quilt, um, to do, to do this echo stitching right inside here. I just did the quarter inch in. I, I did a mark on all of this. And I did that, that little piece right there because it just repeats throughout here. And I marked it and then I took it into designer. I made it all nice and perfect and straight. Oh. And then I brought it in and I would just set up a quick little area and place it and stitch it out on each one of these points. So this, this quilt was done all with Pro Stitcher. All with Pro Stitcher, a lot of help from designer. And a really great start from quiltable.com with the Umbersley Feather Collection. Yeah, that's amazing. It turned out really great. I, really I love, love it. Did. So, so don't be afraid to purchase that design even if it's maybe not exactly 100% gonna fit the way you want it to because with designer, you know that you can make it fit. Mm -hmm. You can make it be exactly what you want, right? Yeah, definitely. So that's the first thing we wanted to show you today, how to take a design and edit it. Now Johnny wants to show you guys how he actually created a design. So over on camera, the other camera, <laughs> thanks Kayla. So this is a block that um, I kind of helped with a couple of years ago. Yeah, I just yeah. had a friend design this block for uh, a fundraiser I was doing. Right. And I really love the graphic quality of yeah. that heart. 
So I really wanted to do something similar. And so if you could look at the on the cam on the on computer the on the screen, thanks. Yeah. This was one that I created mm -hmm. that was basically exactly like that block. And then I did you bring in so so t walk me through your design oh, process. Did you bring in a picture I did, as the backdrop? And I saved that picture to the USB and I didn't forgot to ask you to transfer it over. That's so okay. So I bought a picture of this quilt block, brought it in, and I just traced using you can you, you can bring up your picture as a backdrop. Yep, just like I had before. Yeah, like she had before. And then yeah. I just traced around. Mm -hmm. And then I so I had that one first. And mm -hmm. then I had a friend bring me another quilt that it had oops, not that one, sorry. It had it go. had this shape here. Mm -hmm. So she had pieced this shape here. Oh. And I wanted to use this same design, that really graphic geometric yeah. design but in that shape. So I just brought this one in. I brought I brought this one in first. Mm -hmm. I traced this from the quilt. Awesome. And then I just uh, changed the lines of it. So I just brought the oh. lines over so you can kind of see how this, mm -hmm. let's see. So this uh, quilt is a little different. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there we go. I wanted to there screen. You go. zoom in. Yeah, it's slightly it's slightly different. Yeah, I just added this little square point up here. Mm -hmm. And then, so talking about creating new designs, and yeah. well, I, uh, down here, you can see that it wasn't exactly right. Right. So I just had to play with those nodes there, make them all pop together. Met at the same point. So. so when it stitches out, you get that beautiful <laughs> where everything just comes together perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that's how I created that my own design. And again, that's something you're you can totally do with on your you know yeah. being in a, being in something behind you. Mm -hmm. And again, if, if it's a copyrighted design, we don't want you to sell it to someone else or sell your right. You know, that yeah. That kind of thing. So. But when you're creating quilting designs for your quilt, it, there's Pull, pull from the quilt for inspiration. Yeah. It's always a great idea. I love taking an idea from the fabric even uh -huh. and creating a design to go with it. So sometimes I'll take a picture of that and then bring it in as a backdrop and use that to create something really custom and special for that quilt. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun to do, isn't it? Yeah, and that I wanted, I guess I should have explained a little bit too. I mm -hmm. This quilt that had this shape of the heart Mm -hmm. She had pieced just one row of those. Right. Remember that? I yeah, right I do. Yeah. So I had just one long row of the heart and then like a whole queen king size quilt of blank space. So I did echo quilting of the hearts to make it look like they're all pieced all the, along. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, anyways, ghost quilting. Echo, ghost yeah. quilting, yeah. yeah. And I did an all over pattern over the top of that. So it so cool. turned out really cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think I have a picture that we can insert there as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll be sure and put that one in there. So it is so much fun to play with a designer and come up with all these great things. Definitely. So we'd love to see what you're working on with designer too. Designer is such a great tool. And just a reminder, you don't have to just use this with a uh, robotic quilting system. Exactly. You could do the same thing. I could have done the same thing, brought in the picture, set up how I wanted to quilt it out, and then printed out and created stencils and used them, mm -hmm. um, used rulers for part of it. It's absolutely doable yeah. that you can use these designs um, if you're a free motion quilter. Definitely. And free motion either on a frame mounted machine, the machine that you know, traditionally stand up and move the machine, or on your stationary machine. Yeah, exactly. I know people who quilt stuff like this on their domestic machines and my hat goes off oh to Oh my them. gosh, more power to you. You <laughs> domestic machine quilters, I really you're amazing. Tip you're of the hat. amazing. But this, but designer can absolutely be used by any quilter for projects like these. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. I think that's all we have, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, thank you so much for watching our watch and learn today. Be sure to tune in next week. We have more tips and tricks for you. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you mm -hmm. haven't already, and like this video if you would please. And have fun quilting this week.